Hi everyone, this is Pre Algebra Lesson 1 4. Subtract integers. In this lesson, we'll be able to subtract integers. Let's start with solve and discuss it. A library database shows the total number of books checked out at any given time as a negative number. What are the possible numbers of books that were checked out and checked in on Monday? Explain. So if you look at the library database here, in the morning, we start with negative 37 books that were checked out. In the evening, it says there were 45 books that were checked out. So since morning, how many more books were checked out? Eight more books were checked out. The distance between negative 37 and negative 45 is just eight. 45 minus 37 would be eight. So, it is possible that eight books were eight more books were checked out since morning to evening, but not everyone comes to the library just to check out the books, right? Some people return the books. So maybe um, two people return the book and ten people checked out. So in the system, it says uh, eight books, eight more books were checked out since morning but it doesn't show how many books were checked in, right? So there are many numbers of uh, possibilities for the number of checking in and out between morning and evening on Monday. Um, but it needs to, it needs to add up so that it matches the number of books checked out in the evening, okay? Let's, uh, let's write down our observation here. There were eight more books checked out by the end of the day since negative 37 plus negative 8 is equal to negative 45. So the number of books checked out has to be eight more than the number of books checked in. So if 10 books were checked out, then two books were checked in. Okay, those are examples. But, but if 12 books were to be checked out, then four books should have been checked in, and so on. Okay? All right. Thinking about that, we'll continue with our lesson in the next page. So think about how is subtracting integers related to adding integers. We talked about adding integers in the last lesson, right? Um, today, we're going to look at subtracting integers and how it's similar and different from adding integers. Let's look at example one, subtract positive integers. A football team gains three yards on first down. On second down, they lose eight yards. What is the total change in yards after the first two downs? So they start from zero. They gain three yards, right? So they're from here, this team. It seems like in the picture, they, they're from here. Okay, so from the middle, they gain three yards, and then, but then second down, from here, they lose eight yards. So they lose more than they gained. So you can use what you know about adding integers to subtract integers. So first, use a number line to represent the team's total change in yards. So from zero, you add three. And then from that three, you, you subtract eight. So ultimately, you end up with negative five. And you can also use subtraction expression to represent the team's change in yards. So three minus eight would be, uh, could also be written as addition, three plus negative eight. And we already learned that if we're adding two uh, integers that has different signs, then we, we subtract the, the absolute value of them, whichever is greater, and we keep 
the sine of the absolute value, whichever absolute value is greater. Okay, so 8 minus 3 is 5, and 8 is greater than 3, so we're going to keep the negative sign from negative 8. So we have negative 5. The total change in yards after the first two downs is represented by negative 5. All right, now it's your turn. Try it. On the next play, the team gained 5 yards and then lost 6 yards. What is the total change in yards? See if you can fill in the blanks by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? Look at the number line here. The team gained 5 yards and then lost 6 yards. So what does it, what does it go first? For gain, they earned 5 yards. For the loss, they lost 6 yards. So the subtraction equation would be f positive 5 minus 6. And change that into an addition. You can have 5 plus negative 6. And so if you add them up, you will end up with negative 1. So the total change in yards is negative 1. So they had a total loss of 1 yard. Loss already represents the negative sign. So you don't have to write negative 1 here. They lost 1 yard. Convince me, is the additive inverse of an integer always negative? What is an additive inverse again? We learned it in the previous lesson. Additive inverses are the opposites. The opposites cancel each other out. They are, uh, they are the same digit. There are the same number with different signs, with opposite signs. So if you add positive 5 and negative 5, you end up with 0. Additive inverses always add up to 0. So no, it doesn't always end up with negative because it's going to end up, it's always going to end up with 0. The additive inverse of a negative integer is positive. Okay, let's look at the next page, example 2. Subtract integers with different signs. Ian's football team lost 2 yards on a running play. Then they received a 5-yard penalty. What is the team's total change in yards? So first they lost two yards, and then they lost another five yards by penalty. So total, they lost negative seven yards. That's sad. Okay. So subtracting with subtracting with um, different signs. If you, add, if you change them to addition, they become the same signs. And then you can just add them and keep your sign as negative. Example 3. Subtract negative integers. Find negative 7 minus negative 8. How would you subtract a negative number? You're going to write negative 7 ne minus negative 8 as an equivalent addition expression. Subtracting a negative number is when you change. So it, when you subtract, you go left, right? But if you're adding negative number, you also go left. So if you're subtracting a negative number, that becomes you're going to change your direction going left and then going right. You're going to change your direction from here to there, right? So it becomes positive when you change it to in addition, so negative 7 minus negative 8 becomes negative 7 plus 8. That negative, two negatives, are going to become one positive, okay? So you just have to add negative 7 and 8. You simply have to uh, subtract 7 from 8. You get a positive 1. All right, so now it's your turn. Try it. Um, number three, subtract. Use a number line to help you find the answer. So see if you can find all these accurately from A to F. 
and plot them on the number line. Um, come back when you're ready for answer. Okay, are you ready? So from negative four, if you go, uh, if you go six units to the left, you're subtracting six. You go one, two, three, four, five, six. So you end up with negative ten. So this is equal to negative ten. Okay. Part B, from negative 6, you are subtracting negative 4. If you're adding negative 4, you go left. But if you're subtracting negative 4, you have to add 4. You go right. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you're going to end up with negative 2. All right. Part C, 4 minus negative 6. In the same way, you change the negative uh, the minus and the negative into one addition and then your 6 becomes positive. So this is equal to 4 plus 6 and that's equal to positive 10. Alright, part D, 6 minus 4 is 2. Part E, 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Part F, negative 4 minus negative 6 should be positive 2. Check your answers, see if you got everything correct. If you did, great job, you got this lesson correctly. So let's summarize our lesson. When subtracting integers, such as a minus b, you can use the additive inverse to write subtraction as an equivalent addition expression. So if you have a subtraction equation, you can change it to addition equation as well. And all the addition rules from the previous lesson apply. All right, guys, that was it for lesson, um, lesson four, subtracting integers. We'll continue with lesson five, adding and subtracting rational numbers in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you. Bye.